Hello YouTube, how's everyone doing? It's Professional here. So the new DLC has dropped for Reddit Online Frontier Pursuits, and the first role that I will be showing you guys off in this video is the trader, and I'll be talking about what I have understood from the trader, what the trader does. I've been playing around with the trader mostly all day. So to start off with the trader, what you need to do is you need to go to the post office, and when you go to the post office, you actually pick up a letter from Crips. And when you pick up this letter from Crips, it actually tells you that he has an important business venture. And then you have to meet him at a general store. I'm not sure if this location is different for everybody. My location was the, the general store in Valentine. But let me know in the comments down below if you actually had a different um, location than me. So when you meet Crips, you get this cutscene right here. Let me play this for you guys. Yeah, the size of a pumpkin. It must have been really something. You made it. Eh? Follow me. Now, uh, like I said in my letter, we are going into business. I've been breaking down animals since I was knee-high to a sprinter. And I worked as a tanner up in Wisconsin back in the 60s. Uh, that's a very long story. So I've got three words for you. Crips Trading Company. Pristine pelts and animal parts for bulk sale. I know the market's there. All I need is a partner. So I'm thinking you source the materials. Skins, plumes, horns, and the like. I'll clean them and prep them. Then you go out and make the sale. Hell, we might even eat well out of this for once, too. Wouldn't that be nice? <coughs> Why are you still here with us? Your provisions, oh, Mr. Cripps. Oh, yeah. Uh, pack the rest on there, will you? Now, uh, with any opportunity comes risk. Uh, competitors, thieves, me losing interest in the whole idea. But if we combine our talents, we'll be unstoppable. Now, I will require a, an initial modest investment, of course, startup costs and such like, but you'll recoup that as fast as you can say, hey, Crips, you handsome genius. <laughs> so how about it? Are you in? My talents extend far beyond the harmonica, I can assure you. Good. Now, you won't regret this, I promise. Now, I've already got hold of a small wagon and most of what we'll need in terms of initial supplies. If you can grab that and bring it back to camp, we'll get everything set up. This is gonna be fun. Come on. So right after that cutscene, you get your first supply run mission, and you actually have to steal supplies and then bring it back to your camp. I had my mission here in the Grizzlies, and it was actually right next to the camp too, it was actually not that far from it. So I got over here and I killed these two enemies, and I delivered the supplies. And once I did that, I got a little bit of materials, but my production rate, my supplies, was all full. Now how does the trader business work exactly? If you have played Grand Theft Fifth Auto online, and you know the MC businesses, the trader business is very similar to the MC business, works a little bit differently, but it's pretty similar to the MC business. Now the MC business, you had product and you had had um, supplies. Supplies would produce product. In this one, it's a little different where you have production, which are basically supplies, and then you have materials. And materials, they're basically whatever you hunt. Um, they're pelts, you know, they're animal parts, teeth, um, uh, claws, uh, fangs, things like that. But Crips does not actually take meat from you. So he will not take meat. He will only take animal parts. Pelts, carcasses, parts. Those, that's what he will take. He will not take meat from you. So there's still an incentive to sell meat. So chances are, if you're stocking up on a lot of um, different pelts, you're probably getting a lot of meat. So make sure you sell that at the butcher. So there is still is an incentive to go to the butcher. But anyways, the supplies, you can only get that from steel missions. You either start up a steel mission from the camp or you purchase supplies. I haven't purchased supplies yet, but I actually think that it's worth stealing supplies because you get a little bit of material and you also get a lot of XP. In, take a look at this one mission here. I did this one steel supply mission and I was getting 500 XP per bag. I was doing it with a posse where we stole three bags, but it was 500 XP per bag. That's 1500 XP. That is insane. That is one of the best paying XP missions that I've seen. I have not seen an, a mission that gives you more XP than that. And you also get XP towards the trader. So you're going to want to do these steel supply missions early on because it's going to help you rank up the trader pretty fast. Now the trader has their own upgrade tree, and to take a look at this upgrade tree, you need to go to the pause menu, you need to go to progress, and go to roles, and then go to trader. Each class has their own upgrade tree, but for this video, we're going to be focusing on the trader. So we go to trader here, and this might seem a little confusing at the start, but basically you have a new form of currency called tokens, and those are those blue little coins you guys see at the top there. I have two tokens, and how this works is this works across all three classes, is each time you level up, apparently in that class, you get two tokens. And the bar at the top, 
those represent things that you just unlock over time. So as you rank up with the trader or whatever role you're playing, you are going to get those automatically. The ones below are items that you specifically purchase that can also help you with that class. And so that people don't get this wrong, because I thought this at first, the token price does not represent the actual price that you're purchasing for. You need the token price. So let's say that you want to buy something. You have to pay the tokens for that and you have to pay the base price also, whatever that is. And for the trader, I've noticed there's some pretty important things. The stew pot you should get early on because that'll be in your camp and it'll fill up your cores. But there's also a pouch to fill up uh, more materials, car carry more materials. At level five, there is an upgraded delivery wagon because when you first start with the trader, you will have a small wagon and you will be only able to sell 25, um, 25 crates or 25 goods at a time. But when you get that medium wagon at level five, you'll be able to sell 50. 50 um, crates versus 25 and then at level 10 there are two different other wagons there's a hunting wagon which will actually let you collect numerous pellets and then bring them back to crypts so you're probably going to want to get that level 10 and also the large wagon which will be able to carry a full 100 goods and make large sales but how do sales work exactly with the trader and do you get a lot of money doing it so here's that coming up right now Right now, at the moment, I am only able to sm sell small shipments because I don't have the medium and the large wagon, but as I rank up, I will also do a video on that and showing the full amount. But right now, we're doing the small option, and it will actually produce past 25, so 25 is not the limit. It will actually produce more than that, but you can only sell 25 at a time. And you have a long distance or a local distance sale. Now, at local distance, you guys see it's $62. At long distance, it is $78. And when you do a mission like this, you want to invite people to your posse preferably friends for that just so that people protect you along the way because apparently people can also steal your um they can steal your goods i haven't seen that happen yet but there is this little notification at the screen that says that it can happen so you're going to be taking this very far if you choose if you choose the long distance delivery you're actually going to be taking this very far this small wagon and it's going to be a minimum of at least 12 minutes most cases it took around 15 minutes for me so be ready to ride for about 15 minutes now if you get to the drop off you are either going to end the mission there or you could encounter enemies i've actually encountered enemies on the second time the first time i did it i did not encounter any enemies i didn't seem to encounter any npc enemies along the way the road seemed clear but you know players could um could fill that position there so when i actually finally delivered it i got 78 dollars now there is no high demand bonus in this game in gt online there is a high demand bonus for making sales when you are in a populated lobby with a lot of people you will actually get one percent back on that product that you're selling based on the amount of people so you get a maximum of 25 percent bonus here in red dead online it appears that bonus is not there so it does not really matter how many people are in the lobby so i mean the smaller the lobby i guess the better um the better place to sell it in but also a lot of people are probably wondering this how much money do your does your posse get i was about to say associates because of gt online but how much money does your do your posse members get for actually helping you with this sale they actually get a pretty good amount of money my posse members got $39 each. And take a look at this. I actually helped my friend sell his shipment. We had to um, travel across the map for 15 minutes, but the pay was actually worth it. That's pretty good. So, you know, if a friend ever says to you, you know, I need help selling my shipment, help them sell their shipment. You'll get a decent amount of money back. Now, there's one final thing about the trader that a lot of people are probably going to be wondering, and that is, will my business be producing while I'm doing other things? Like in GTA Online, for instance, can my business produce when I'm doing other activities? Yes and no. If you are doing other things, you have your camp open, it will be producing, as long as you have materials and supplies. Unfortunately, though, from what I have seen and me and my friends have tested it, if you join another person's posse and you your camp has product and it has materials, or I should say supplies at this point, it will not be producing. So it ha your camp has to be the one that's open. So if your camp is not open, you're in somebody else's camp, your camp unfortunately will not be producing. At least that's what I've seen. I've tested it and you know, my friend, he was stocked up on materials, he was stocked up on supplies, and we played in my posse for a decent amount of time, nothing produced for him. So let me know, what do you guys think of this role? Um, I'm also gonna do a video covering the other roles. I'll have those videos coming up, but I wanted to start with a trader because I like the business aspect of it. I think the trader is one that I'm going to really enjoy doing. So thank you guys for watching. If you guys enjoyed the video, drop a like. If you're new to my channel, show my content, subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care, everyone.